Hey there everybody, it's Matt the Dice Trucker from the Literary Gamers coming to you with another board game review. Today we're taking a look at Distant Suns. This is published by, B by ELO and uh, uh, designed by Gary Kim and Yan Ming Jung. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Very sorry if I didn't. But let's head down to the table and see how this plays. So here we have a game of Distant Suns set up. Now, of course, you're going to be playing this between two and five players, I believe. Let me check the box and make sure before I get added on the internet. Um, two to four players. And um, you are going to be using this board in the middle to select what kind of things you'll be doing. Now, of course, the object of the game is to get the most points. And you're going to be doing that by taking these little modules and placing them around the board in those little notches. The big thing you need to remember here is when it's the singular hand with the pencil, you are going to be drawing that symbol. And when it's multiple hands with the pencil in their hand, your opponents are going to be drawing with, uh, that symbol. Now you're going to be drawing things like this here and all these different types of symbols here. So while it is blank here, let me flip it over. You're gonna be drawing all of those things as you get through the game. Um, a few rules, you may draw over aliens and research tokens, but you may never draw over treasures. You need to completely surround treasures to score them at the end of the game. You're also going to want to draw over aliens, because for each alien you did not draw over, you're going to lose five points. And you're also looking to get, and this was really tough for me to see the first time, get to these planets here. And the hexes that you need to touch to get to those planets are kind of surrounded in their color. This one over here, you need one of these three. And this one down here, you need one of these two. And you're starting from over here. Like I said, on your turn, you're going to take a module. And you are going to place it along two nodes. Let's say I do, and you can flip this too, so it's the opposite side. Let's say I do that one. So I will draw this symbol while all my opponents draw that symbol. Now when you draw the symbol, it wants you to draw the three hexes and then put that little symbol in there because at the end of the game, you are going to count how many of this symbol covers aliens. And then you're going to put that into your little uh, thing here. And if you're able to put like, let's say three of them, you'll get 10 points for that. All right. This symbol that I've put here for my opponents needs to be surrounding treasure. Now, probably not the best idea because you see it's um, uh, four out of the six you need to surround a treasure. Uh, but then again, everyone's starting from this corner. And so you'll get uh, points based off of how many um, of this shape surrounds that treasure. Then, uh, let's keep going here. This shape is how many of this shape covers the research tokens. And I'll talk about research in just a bit. This one is continuous shapes of this. That's for this scoring. And this over here is how many of this shape surrounds a black hole. Now, a black hole is an open, never changing, because these all change out. And there's different, different symbols you can draw. Um, there is an open one that will never change between games. And that's if you choose this node here to create a black hole and then you make a swirly in there. Now, after you're done drawing your image and then your opponent draws their image, um, they are gonna take the next node in the pile and go along until they cannot place a node, either it being the last one, sorry, the, a module being the last one or that there's just nowhere to place one. And that'll happen anywhere between four and five of the modules. Then you collect all the modules and you start round two. At the end of three rounds, the game will be done. Throughout the game, when you reach one of these planets, you announce that you've reached this planet. You circle the planet number, the other players cross that out because it's a first time bonus. Also, when you cover a research node, I'm trying to get this to focus, um, you will mark off that you've got a research node. When you want to draw a shape, but are like they're one many two hexagons in the way you can choose to spend that resource that research to get rid of one hexagon in that shape all right and like i said before you're going to be doing these scoring mechanisms at the end of the third round right here you'll write down if you've gotten certain planets and all their total for each treasure you completely surrounded it's 10 points and then you'll do that and for each alien you did not cover it's minus five points. Just to give you an idea of scoring here, um, 
I had three aliens covered by that shape in that game, at least, and that gave me 10 points. I had zero research um, covered by that, so I got, of course, zero points. I had one treasure, so that gave me three points. One uh, continuous, so that gave me three points, and two of that shape next to a black hole, so that got me 22 points here. These are my planet totals, and I had four treasures uh, at uh, times 10, 40, and I only missed two aliens through the whole thing. Yes, so that gave me minus 10, what is 72. So that's pretty much how it scores. There are different little shapes you can do throughout the, uh, do the different uh, play. Uh, and there's also these here, which are kind of neat. If you're having a hard time figuring out how you want to draw the symbol, you can place this on your board and you'll be fine to figure out the um, orientation of how you want to draw it. That is pretty much Distant Suns. Uh, if any questions, please let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to respond to them in a timely manner. Let's head back up to the table and hear my thoughts on this one. So that is Distant Suns. There's a lot to like about this game, and there's a lot of things that I have some concerns with, but nothing too huge. First uh, and foremost, and I'm not going to hold the game here because the camera, not the camera, the, uh, the microphone's right here, and I don't want somebody to complain about that sound. Um, I know my audience too well. Okay, so Distant Suns is really a choose and write game. You know, it's got the giant pad in there that gives you all the options for what you're going to be doing. Um, the nice thing about this one is you can switch up kind of the different designs of what's being done with the different um, objectives that you're trying to get, objectives or scoring, scoring tokens there. Distant Suns reminds me a lot of... Um, kind of like the, the Isle of Cats roll and write, where it seems like there's a, a lot of really neat things happening here, but I'm not sure the neat things are keeping me engaged in the game. So the idea of the, uh, the, the choosing of the module and the nodes, I like that. I like the fact that you're actually planning out your own stuff, but you're also checking out and seeing what other people are doing on their boards. Here's the key though. I was never really looking at Jen's board. I was only going, what do I need? And looking down and saying, okay, I need this. I never looked over and said, does she need that for treasure over there? Or is she gonna get to a planet before I do? I never thought about that. And maybe with a larger player group, I would, but in this game, I wasn't. And it was the thing that intrigued me the most about Distant Sons, was the idea that you get to do this and everyone else has to do that and I just felt like it kind of was a bit of a letdown. And that's not a bad thing. This game is going to work for somebody. Um, a lot of people who love doing spatial elements and the polyomino style games are probably going to enjoy this to an extent. Um, of course, you know, we're all loving the, the Vincent Dutre artwork here on the cover. Um, and I also love the fact that there is a strategy to ending the game quickly by purposely placing your modules into nodes that aren't allowing the last module to be placed. That is a strategy. In a two-player game, it never really came into prominence. So I'm hoping that with more players, this will be a bit more engaging. Uh, as of right now, uh, at two players, it was a fun little roll and write. That's pretty much all I can say about it. The next thing I would say is that I liked was that it came with those little pieces that were the shapes that you were selecting because I was trying to kind of put down the shapes in a way that would work for me, but I have to flip it and wait, does this even work? Am I gonna cover a treasure? I can't do that. So having the shape there was really helpful. And at least in two players, it's really helpful because only two people are looking at two different shapes. I can't speak for a four player game where three people are trying to get to look at one little shape thing. And uh, I didn't mind too much the drawing of the shapes. It helps with end game scoring and figuring out what covered what and all the uh, covering of the aliens or the covering of the, uh, the research tokens. That to me was fine. Um, this game gets like a solid seven. It's a good game. I will play it if you ask me to, but it doesn't need to stay in our collection. The roll and write, flip and write, place and write genre, blank and write. It's such an overbloated genre right now. Everyone is making a different version of the roll and write. Sometimes I'll get a, a Kickstarter. Hey, you kickstarted this game back in the day. 
how about the roll and write version of the of of this of this game or you know, it's it's getting a little out of hand uh now that is of course just me talking that might be completely different for you more power to you if you only want to have blank and write games in your collection then so be it all right so distant suns great if you love the blank and write genre and if you love playing um the polyomino style games uh, otherwise, like I said, Solid 7 for me, it's not going to stay in our collection, but it will have a new life at the library and hope that it connects with somebody there. That's all for me today. That's Distant Suns, Yellow Games with Gary Kim and Yao Ming Jong. Thank you for joining me. Subscribe to the channel. Do all the things with the notifications and the bell and whatever they tell you to do out there for the other channels you got that going on with. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.